Praise God that we can stand before Him tonight, those that belong to Jesus, those who have been cleansed and washed in the blood, that we can stand before Him today, this evening, this night, understanding that I'm as righteous as I'll ever be Amen. because of the blood of Jesus. Amen. My righteousness is Jesus. I, I can't be any more right than Him. Amen. And when I, when I am immersed in Him, when I trust Him, not putting faith in my own faith, not putting faith in the fact that I've prayed, not putting faith in the, in the fact that I've done all that I needed to do, but putting simplicity, just simple faith in trusting Jesus, just trusting Jesus. The Scripture says, God declares me righteous. He imputes righteous to me. Isn't that a blessing? Now what that, makes you, what that ought to make you want to do is, is to live rightly before God as well and to seek Him out. And I want you to notice in these passages that we're going to deal with tonight, I believe they'll help you where you are, and, and I think they will help you help someone else in the coming days as a disciple maker for the glory of God, a fisher of men who's following Jesus. So if you'd stand in honor and reverence to the reading of God's Word, look in verse number 15. 15, 16, and 17 is what we'll look at tonight. Ecclesiastes chapter number 5 verse 15 says, As he came forth of his mother's womb, naked shall he return to go as he came and shall take nothing of his labor which he may carry away in his hand. And this also is a sore evil that in all points as he came, so shall he go. And what profit hath he that hath labored for the wind? All his days also he eateth in darkness, and he hath much sorrow and wrath with his sickness. Let us pray. Father, we come before you today, this very evening, and approach your throne of grace, and just thank you for the precious blood of Jesus, Lord. We're asking you in this service tonight to remember Jesus, to remember, as, as the, the Old Testament writers would say, remember David and the covenant that you made with him. Lord, we come to even a fuller revelation, and we say remember Jesus over us tonight. Speak life into us, O oh God. Help us understand how, how urgent and how crucial it is to be in, in right relationship with you and have a, a, a sense of, of peace, of reconciliation uh, with you through the blood of the Lamb. And we just give you the glory and the praise, asking you to prepare our hearts that we want to be men and women, that when the people that truly do fear you and walk with you and talk with you, when they see us, they're glad to see us, because we also hope in thy word. We give you the praise and the glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. As we look at this passage of Scripture and just think about some of the implications of it, I want you to, uh, just for a moment, to reflect upon uh, the, the, the fact that when you think about a little baby that enters into this world, the Scripture says, and we all very aware of this, that a baby enters in this world naked. They come in this world with nothing, and the Scripture says, we'll actually leave this world naked as well. We won't carry these old clothes that we have on. None of us are going to take any money that we have. We're not going to take our homes or our cars or our toys or anything like that. None of that's going with us when we go to heaven. Amen? It's just us. We're the only ones that are going. And whether we have a relationship with Jesus or we don't, we'll be determined where we will spend eternity, either with Him or apart from Him, in torment and shame in a place called hell. But the Bible says that it is a sore evil for a man in all points to leave this world as he came into this world. Now what does that mean? It's a sore evil. It's a terrible thing that a, a man live his life and depart out of this world just like he entered into this world. Now think about that with me for a moment. How does a baby, a little one, enter into this world? Well, a baby enters into this world very, very self-centered. Everything is about that baby. That baby wants its bottom clean. It wants its belly full. 
and it wants a good place to rest, and it wants all your attention if it can get it. Are you with me? Now, some people live life that way. They live and they die no different than how they entered into this world. Self-centered, not a giver but a taker. Everything's always about them. And they always find ways to pacify their lives. Maybe not with a little pacifier. Maybe not with a bottle in their mouth. Maybe not with a little baby food on a plate before them. But it turns into cars and it turns into jobs and it turns into houses and it turns into vacations and it turns into relationships and it turns into I've got to have another woman or I've got to have another man. Something to pacify and satisfy me apart from the redeeming work and the presence of a living Savior by the name of Jesus Christ. The Scripture says that is a terrible, terrible, sore evil for a man to leave this world as he came, having to be pacified by things and not the Savior himself. That's a, that's a sore evil. Now, some of you in here tonight may be in that very position. You entered into this world as a baby. And as a baby, you entered this world a sinner. The Bible says in Psalm 58 and verse 3, For from the womb we went away speaking lies. We come out of the womb lost. I don't know if you recognize that or realize that or not. But every single person born of a woman besides the Lord Jesus Christ was born a sinner. Born self-centered, dependent upon everybody else to take care of them, a taker and not a giver, only wanting what we want. And if we die that way, we'll die separated from the Lord Jesus. So there has to be something that takes place between me being born and me dying that something supernatural, something all-consuming, something that radically transforms and changes our lives from being everything about me to being everything about Jesus. The Bible would describe that to us as being reconciled unto God. Or what a term I like to use is being permanently interrupted by Jesus. Totally and completely and utterly permanently interrupted and powerfully invaded by, by the grace of God so that my life is no longer the same. Now, of course, I, I can be self-centered. Can you? Can, can you put your attention on you often? Do you find yourself downcast in spirit when you're not getting what you want? Wives, does that husband of yours swell up and pout and cry every once in a while when he ain't getting what he, what he thought he ought to get out of life? Wives, if your needs are not being emotionally met or however it may be, you're not getting the things that you may want, do you find yourself every once in a while pouting and whining and crying and looking for something to pacify you? We can all act that way, but for a believer, he won't characteristically act that way. Now, he can act like a fool every once in a while, but he won't be classified as a fool in everyday life. Why? Because of the all-consuming transformation of the grace of God that transforms our life and makes us into a new creature that old things pass away and behold, all things become new and that our lives are turned to live for the glory of God and be spent for His glory. Praise God for Jesus and salvation. Amen? Now, I want you to think about that in here tonight because this is not going to be a complex thing. It's very simple. When in your life did Jesus interrupt you and put you on another course of living? When was it that things changed in your life that you no longer made everything about you, but everything became about Him? And if that hadn't happened yet, you're, on the, you're still on the verge, on the path of destruction and perishing before the Lord. Now, yes, you, you don't need somebody to come and take care of your diaper. And yes, you don't need somebody to put food on your table. And you don't need somebody to lay you down and rest. But that may not be the things no longer that, that pacify you. Other things do. 
It might be the hunting lease. Got to get to the woods. It might be buying guns or buying cars or, or, or buying four-wheelers and boats and I've got to have me a place on the lake and I've got to have all these things that begin to satisfy us but we just can't seem to be content with Jesus than Jesus alone. Am I speaking to anybody tonight? Scripture says it's a sore thing if you find yourself in that position not being interrupted by Jesus and you die in that condition. You die and go to hell. I've got a little thing that I started doing. You see this right here? It's a little pacifier. I carry these in my pocket. And I use this as a tool to witness and talk to people and evangelize. And I use these principles right here. After talking with them and fellowshipping with them for a moment and finding out where they are in life, and, and when I discern that this individual has not been born again, they don't belong to Jesus, and, and, and they may think they do, or sometimes they may fully acknowledge that they don't, that they're still living for life is all about them and what they are going to get and what they're going to do about their career and about their land and about their homes and about all that they're going to do, and it's got nothing to do with an eternal value. As I talk with them, I, I, I pull out this little pacifier, and I don't give it to them to when somebody's whining and pouting and crying, that would be out of, they, they, they might want to fight me then, and I wouldn't want to fight, you know. I don't do it to, to make them feel bad in the sense that, oh, you're just a, a, a powder. You ever tell somebody just, oh, you need to quit pouting and grow up? Come on, grow up and be a man. Grow up and be a big girl. You ever, anybody ever tell you that? You ever tell anybody that? Well, if you ever tell them that, don't give them a pacifier after it because it ain't going to go over well. But what I do is, is when I discern that, that this person is, is lost in their sin, I take this pacifier and I say, look, I, I want to give you something just to, to help you to remember our conversation and to remember what God says about how you entered into this world and how you will leave this world in the condition that you're currently in. God says it's a terrible thing for you to live and die this way. I don't know what it is. You've shared a few things with me, and I'm talking to you as if I'm talking with them. But some things in this life seem to be used by you. They pacify you. They're what you're dependent upon. They're what you seek next. And, and, and you're making everything about you. And if you died in that condition, you'll die separated from the Lord. You'll, you'll perish. And I want to give you this just to remember that unless you are born again, saved by Jesus, give your life to Him, and you die in that condition, you're going to die lost. And I want to give you this as a reminder of that. And I want to tell you, I believe it has an effect on people. I don't think they're going to take it and go throw it away. I think they're going to put it up somewhere, and I pray, and I got other people praying alongside me, with me, that they're going to think about this pacifier every time they see it, every time they feel it, every time they look at it, even if they cast it away, or in their mind they can't get away from the fact, well, I'm sure I've been acting like a, a big baby. Everything's about me. And if I die like this, I die lost. And I'm praying and praying that God's going to use it to save. People are going to be saved because God brings them to himself, draws them to himself because they realize that they are self-centered. Everything is about them. It's about them having what the American dream said they ought to have. It's about them having their goals and their ambitions and all those things. And none of those things are, 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 are bad. They're only bad when Jesus is not center of them. When he's not the one giving it, amen? When he's not the one initiating that aim in life. When he's not the one who's involved in every dynamic of it. When he's not the one who is my shepherd, who has taken me and leading me into the green pastures and by still waters and through the valley of the shadow of death. 
when he's not the one whose rod is the one who is chasing and correcting my life and molding my life and making me, establishing me for who I am, that I can say, as Paul said, by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me wasn't in vain. And folks, until that ever happens to us, and we die in that condition, we die lost. And you know how many people you come in contact with on a daily basis? You know how many people you work alongside with, live in the same community with, and oftentimes even go to church with that are in the position that is no different than when they came into this world. And it's a sore evil that you and I oftentimes fail to recognize. And you see, God's called you and me to be an individual, a vessel of His mercy, one who makes a difference in this life. One who is not the mediator, but a mediator that mediates for the mediator to get people to Jesus. To get people to Jesus. Amen? And what we often do is that we've got it caught up in our mind like this, that if we can just get people to, to quickly say a quick prayer and agree with us, that they'll be all right on this journey, but they walk away like I walked away when I was 18 years old from an encounter with a preacher who loved me and cared for me and did what he thought was right for me and told me what I needed to do and led me in a prayer. And I said all the prayers that I needed to say and, and I trusted his word, but I didn't trust Jesus. I didn't give my life to Jesus. I put my confidence in praying a sinner's prayer. I put my faith in the plan of God, but didn't trust the person of God. And I want to tell you, God's plan doesn't save. It's the person. It's Jesus who saves. Now, God's plan is the best plan, but His plan points to the person. And if I'm not careful, I'll put all my trust in a plan in a prayer, in being on a, in, in a church or walking down an aisle and confessing before people, but not really trust Jesus. And the evidence was that is that Nick kept living the way Nick wanted to live. I kept doing what I always done. I, I kept thinking the way that I thought. I, I didn't have a love for the Word of God. I didn't. I didn't have a love for Jesus, and, and I didn't love uh, the people of God. It, if I went to the church of God, it was totally out of obligation because it was the right thing to do. It was what I was supposed to do. It wasn't that I was compelled out of a desire to be with the people of God, to worship the God who rescued me and interrupted me, it was because I, I, I felt like if my mother-in-law and father-in-law called and asked if we went to church, I'd have to tell them again we didn't go. So I would go. You see, that's how it started out with me. The only reason you would have found me in the church was because I was running some girl. And I would bounce from place to place. If they had a girl that I was running after and she was in church, I would go with her. And, and people thought I was all right and... I met Stephanie and started going to church with her, and I went to church with her every week, Sunday morning, Sunday night, for a, a, a long while. And I sat probably three or four rows back, and that preacher would preach, and, and, and I could remember him preaching, but I never one time ever, ever, ever remember him sharing the gospel and pleading and inviting me to receive Jesus and come to Jesus. He did. There's no question in my mind he did. But you know, Nick was blind to sin. And Nick was doing what Nick wanted to do. And Nick was lost in, in perishing in his own sin. And I had a veil over my eyes. And I was blind to that. I had no idea I was even blind to it. I was just doing what I thought was the right thing to do. And I made that profession of faith with my father-in-law and I would go to places and we joined churches and we, we went to Sunday school and, and I always felt so inadequate. I always felt so out of place. I, I didn't like being around people who was going to talk about the Bible. 
because I didn't know anything about the Bible. I was uncomfortable with that. And you see, I was on this course. I was on that course of, it was all about Nick. It wasn't about Jesus, it was about me. And then one day, sitting in a service, I just discerned in my spirit that Jesus was saying, today is the day that you come to me. Come to me. You can gain it all, gain everything. The preacher was preaching out of Matthew 16. And what if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? You've lost everything. And I kept holding on the fact that I was saved because I said that prayer. And I went down on the altar that day and I said, God, take my life. Do whatever you want to do with my life. I surrender. I surrender my life to you. I believe you. I trust you. I, I long for you. I want you. And I want to tell you, from that point in my life, I, I stood up a different person. I love the Word of God. I love the people of God. I love to share what Jesus did for me. I started sharing Jesus on the streets. And it wasn't, it wasn't me. It was Jesus who got in me and changed me and transformed me. And I told my father-in-law who loved me and cared for me, who led me and when I was 18, now I'm 26 years old, and he, 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 I told him about it. He said, Nick, that is great. You, you know, God saved you back then when you asked him to save you, and now you rededicated your life. You finally surrendered over the Lord. Now you can be discipled and grow. I went and talked with my pastor. He said, Nick, you rededicated your life. You're good to go. Now you were saved when you asked Jesus to save you back then and now you rededicate it. And, 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 and I just, I knew, no, I didn't rededicate. God saved me, amen? I, I was lost. It was still about me until this day. And once this happened, once Jesus saved me and I wasn't trusting in what I did, I was trusting him. I was, it was no longer about me. I didn't need things to pacify me anymore. He became my satisfaction in my pursuit in life. And I want to tell you, that's what Jesus does. That as He called all of us to go preach the gospel, He does, yep, He does. Scripture says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away, behold, all things become new. And of God we are reconciled unto Him, and we have been given the ministry of reconciliation. And we've been given the word of reconciliation, that we go and plead within, be ye reconciled unto God. Yeah, all of us have that upon our life. Now, do we all have a calling to pastor a church? No. Do we all have a calling to, to, to be a, uh, an evangelist? No. Do we all have the calling to, to, to be um, a, a musician or whatever it may be? No, not at all. I can't sing a single lick. But I'm called to praise God and to lift my voice up, even if it doesn't sound good to you, because I know it won't. And I'm not even going to show you how bad it would be. But if I'm acceptable because I trust God, what I offer to Him becomes acceptable. Amen? But if I'm not acceptable, ain't nothing in the world I can do for Him becomes acceptable until I'm right with Him. Amen? Now, the key for you and me tonight is, is this. If I met you on the street and didn't know you from Adam and I got to talking with you and found out about your life, would I walk away from you having to give you one of these pacifiers thinking that this, this, this man is still self-centered, living for himself and don't belong to Jesus? Would I discern that from you? Or this woman, it, it's still all about her. Yes, she's, she has got a natural being. You know, women are, are servers naturally. It's in their DNA. It's the way God designed you to, to make sacrifice and to serve. Us old men are sorry, aren't we? We, we, we like to be served, and only if it benefits us will we serve. Are you with me? Well, would I walk away from you, mama, young lady, and say that, that lady, she's on the verge of perishing, on the verge of dying, lost without Jesus. And, and would, I, would I give you this pacifier? Look, I, I, I have them all sizes and shapes. I even got a little bitty one. I tote with me. Never know. Would I give it to you by what you revealed to me 
and the spirit that God's given to me to discern where you are, would you think I would give it to you? Well, if you think so, if you think I would walk away from you thinking that you, you needed an interruption by Jesus to be reconciled to him, if you, if you got a conscience awareness of that, you need to examine where you are tonight. Because I tell you what, when Jesus saves you, changes your life, nobody can talk you out of it. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, you can't. Nobody can make you question because you're not trusting you. You're not trusting what you've done. You're not trusting if you've done it all right. You trust in the one who did it and who did it right and didn't make no mistake when he died on the cross Amen. of Calvary. And you trust in him and in the shedding of his blood. Amen. Yeah. And your life has been changed. You in love with him. And you're growing in his grace. You wouldn't have to worry about me messing y'all up, amen? But if you still are, are in doubt, there's some reason why you're in doubt. You could, be, you could be in sin, and you're acting like a fool, and you are needing things to pacify you because you've got wooed in to thinking and living for yourself, and God says you need to repent in light of that and turn and put your confidence. So I'm asking you tonight in this place, do you belong to Jesus? Are you His? Is He yours? Are you walking with Him, talking with Him, fellowshipping with Him? Are you a fisher of men for Him? Because He says if you follow in Him, you walking with Him and talking with Him, you'll also be gathering with Him. And a gatherer is a fisher of men, a soul winner, somebody who longs to bring other people to Jesus. If you're not, you, need to, you, you either need to be saved or get right with God tonight, amen? And don't wait. 